Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sachin Hisaria and in this video we will be discussing about how to maintain your CISA certificate. Now in order to maintain a CISA certificate you need to comply with the CPE arts limit. So in this video we will be discussing about everything that you need to know about how to maintain your CISA certificate. What are the activity that will be qualifying activity to uh, uh, for CPE claim? And what if you fail to comply with the CPE and how to earn the free CPE and how to claim the CPE credit. So this is our agenda. So without further delay, let's start our video. So guys, basically, uh, in order to maintain a CISA certificate, you will require, require at least 20 hours of CPE in one year. Okay. So every year you have to complete at least 20 hours of a CPE in order to maintain your certificate. So this is the first requirement. And if we combine the CPE hours requirement for the three years, then you need to complete 120 hours CPE in the three years. Okay. Now how to do that? I will demonstrate you uh, with my login as well. So as of now, minimum 20 hours per year and uh, in, a, uh, in a span of a three years, you need to complete 120 hours of a CPE. Now you might be thinking that what would be the qualifying activity for the CPE. So let me tell you guys what are the qualifying activity through which you can claim your CPE. So first is a contribution to the profession. So suppose if you are doing any work, Okay, uh, which is for the ISAC or for any other uh, uh, bodies to contribute to the IS audit and control uh, profession. So basically, for example, if someone from you are working in the IS uh, IT domain, audit domain, okay, so you may claim uh, those uh, uh, for, for the working hours, you can claim the CPE credit and the limit here is 20 hours for the uh, uh, in a one year. Okay, so this is a first qualifying activity. Similarly, suppose if you are doing an exam questions development and review for the ISATA. Okay, so basically there is an option where you can submit your own exam questions. So if your question is accepted by an ISATA, you will get a two CPRs for one question. Okay, so this is again second qualifying activity. Similarly, you can attend uh, Isaka conferences, seminars, workshop, chapters, program meetings. So whatever activity you are doing for Isaka professionals, educations activity, that those activity will also qualify for the CPE credit. You need to maintain a proof of attendance here. You can claim a CPE credit without any limit. Like in first case, we have seen where, where the limit is only uh, uh, 20 hours. You can claim CPE credit up to 20 hours only. But in this case, there is no limit. Similarly, guys, if, if suppose if you are mentoring any uh, student, okay, for the preparations of a ISAKA examination, for that also you will get a CPE credit and you will get a one CPR for each hour of assistance. For example, if you are mentoring someone, for example, I am mentoring you, okay, with my videos. So uh, definitely I can claim a CPE for that, okay. So here the 10 hour is a limitation. And you will get a maximum 10 hours uh, CP credit for this activity. Similarly, suppose if you are uh, engaging in any uh, professional educational activity, which are not related to ISAKA. Okay, suppose if you are participating in in-house training, university courses, conferences and all for that also you will get a CP credit. And here also there is no limit. Okay. Now, there are some other activities. For example, suppose if you have cleared some certifications, you have passed a uh, certified in uh, cyber security examinations, maybe you have cleared your CRISP, CISM, or maybe CISP, whatever certifications you have done, you will get a two CPRs for each examinations are. For example, if your total examinations are is uh, are two, so you will get a CP of four hours for that examination. Okay. But the condition here is you need to pass that examination. Then only you can claim the CP. Okay. Similarly, if you are publishing any article uh, 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 and uh, any other uh, 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 publication on your website or uh, 
uh, any book okay for that also you will get a cp you need to maintain a proof of the same that okay i have written this article or this book or uh, this paper then if you are doing any self study courses uh, so you might be participating to a lot of courses okay a uh, lot of private institutions are uh, uh, also doing uh, the courses so if you are participating in those courses you will get a cp uh, whatever cp mentioned in your certificate so after the completion of the course they issue the certificate in that whatever cp rs is mentioned you will get those suppose if you are engage in the activity of teaching lecturing or presenting for that also you will get a cp here but there is one condition that basically Uh, CPRs are earned at a five times of presentation time. For example, if you have given the presentation of a two hours, okay, so you will get a CP of ten hours for that presentation, okay, first time presentation. Now suppose if you are doing that presentation again, okay, if you are doing that presentation again, that is the second time, then. Uh, whatever the actual presentation time is there, for example, second time also you have. Uh, done those presentation that presentation was 2 hours so in in the second time you will get the cprs of only 2 hours okay so only two time you can take a, a cpr for the uh, teaching lecturing or presenting and after that if you are doing any those presentation and all then your material needs to be changed then only you will get a cp otherwise you will not get a cp so now to clarify this point guys for example if i am teaching you a cisa certificate in cisa certificate suppose i have taken one class that class was 4 hour long okay now i will get a cp for the 4 uh, hour class i how much cp i will get i will get a cp of 20 hours okay five times of the presentation time so it is total 20 hours then next time also suppose if i am taking a same class of a 4 hour then i will get a cp of only 4 hours and third time i will not get any cp for the same material if my material is changed then obviously i can claim cp for the same okay now suppose if you are engaging yourself in the marketing or presentations related to isaka and similarly if you are working with isaka board committee chapters you will get certain cp if you are cert, uh, uh, cyber security practitioners for that you will require the cx uh, uh, cssp certificate if you are that practitioner you can claim cp for the whatever practice that you are doing and if you want to claim for the cp which was not specified above you can also uh, specify those activity and uh, accordingly you can claim your cp so guys this is how you can claim your cp cp these are the uh, methods or these are the qualifying activity you have a too many options just choose for the right option and accordingly claim your cp now you might be thinking what will happen if you don't comply with the cisa cp policy which was explained earlier so if you fail to comply with the policy they have a full right that they will revoke your cisa certification and you cannot use the cisa name uh, uh cisa name like uh, on any of the uh, uh, social media sites and all basically you will not be considered as a cisa certified if you are fail to comply with the cp policy now generally isaka what they will do is on a random or a sample basis they ask for the evidences as well for example if i have reported certain cprs okay i have reported certain cprs on my portal uh, uh then isaka on a sample basis they do the audit of same that whatever claim which you are making for the cp whether those claims are right or wrong so on a random basis they select some candidate and they ask for the proof if they are asking for the proof you need to provide those proof as well okay guys now uh, basically suppose if you are newly a certified cisa for example if someone have cleared their uh, cisa examination in the year of 2024 okay so basically in that year they need not to comply with the cp policy first year they provide the exemption i have cleared my certification in 2024 for first year there is no requirement to maintain the cprs but from a next year onwards i need to comply with the cprs okay guys so this is all about the cp now let's discuss about how to claim the cp credit on the 
uh, on the Isaka portal. Okay, so basically, uh, I will demonstrate you this with the live login. So I am logging uh, my ID here. Okay, so let me complete the login. So just provide your uh, ID password on the portal. Okay, this is the Isaka's portal. This is a step number one. Now, once you provide your ID and the password, then go to the my my Isaka. Click on the certification. Okay, this is a step number two. Okay, so need to wait till the time it is processing. Click on my circle. I think it is taking some time here. Yeah. Okay. So now go to the certification and CP management here. Okay, certification and CP management. Then, then click on report and manage CP. This is your step number three. Once you come here, okay, click on add new CP record. Okay, now here you need to provide the details for which you are uh, uh, claiming the CP. What was the start date? What was the end date? And what was the qualifying activity? Now, all of this qualifying activity, I have already explained you on the slide. Okay, so uh, you need to select the appropriate qualifying activity for which you are claiming the CP. Uh, and uh, just click on a submit, then that accordingly you put your hours here and click on the submit. Once you submit the same, that means you have uh, submitted your request for the CP. Now, Isaka have a right on a random basis. They may select your uh, uh, like few of the candidates for the audit. And if they if you you are selected for the audit, then you need to provide the proof as well. That is all for uh, your CISA CP, guys. This is how you can claim your CISA uh, CP. So that is all for our today's video as well. I hope you uh, uh, you like the video. And uh, if you have any doubt, any query, if you want to ask me anything, just uh, put that in the comment section. And uh, I will be also providing you certain link uh, from where you get some more information about the CISA CP. Okay, so that is all from my side, guys. Uh, uh, yeah, if, you, uh, if you have learned something from the video, please like and share with your friends as well. Uh, so uh, that's all guys. Bye-bye. Take care. See you in the next video. Thank you so much.